Villains of One Punch Man are absolutely insane, but in my opinion, these are the five most uh, insanest. Yeah, insanest, why not? In the roughly 200 chapters we've gotten from One Punch Man so far, we've seen a massive cast of characters get introduced into the story. Really, this is one's greatest talent with any series he's created. He straight up just knows how to make unique and interesting characters that each play their own role within the story so well. Each villain introduced in the series has a role to play and they usually deliver in a massive way when they need to. From insane feats of power to very intimate and deep situations that really leave you thinking, the villain of One Punch Man do it all. While I was thinking about One Punch Man before bed, as I tend to do, and I got to thinking, man, there's a ton of sick villains in the series, but which ones would be in my top five? Well, I'll be figuring that out along with you in this video. And honestly, as I was thinking through these, I feel like the last few might come as a bit of a surprise to you. So make sure to stick around to the end and see if your top five list matches up with mine or not. So I'm pretty much going to be explaining each villain's origin and abilities, along with why they're in my top five to begin with. So yeah, let's get started. First on the list, we have the one-eyed space pirate himself, Lord Boros. Now, I'm sure right now you're probably thinking something like, what the F bro, how could Boros be number five in any top five list? This list is trash already, dog. Well, just chill out, my guy. Other than like the top two, this list is in no particular order. They're kind of just in the order in which I feel like talking about them. With that being said, Boros is undeniably one of the strongest villains One Punch Man has ever seen, period. Really, before Cosmic Fear Garo made his appearance, Boros held the top spot in terms of strength for a very long time, and for good reason. Boros was the leader of the alien pirate group called the Dark Matter Thieves, and much like Saitama, had a self-imposed existential crisis, having become so powerful that no fight would excite him anymore. He's from an alien planet where the extreme environmental conditions caused his species to evolve, having exceptional regeneration abilities along with enhanced strength and speed. Boros in particular was a prodigy even within his own species, so he stood miles above them as the strongest in the universe. He he also of course has the good old classic energy projection abilities. You guys probably already knew all that, but did you know that the Boros you see in the manga and anime is actually not the original design for his character? The first version of Boros looked more human-like and had different armor too. The armor in particular looks distinctly different because it's like all black and has a different shape to it. I don't know, it looks kind of weird to me to be honest. Also, originally Boros had a fourth form that he was going to take in his fight against Saitama, but Murata ended up scrapping it, but we still have this concept concept sketch to see what could have been. I personally think it looks kind of cool, but let me know what you think in the comments below. Really, there's two main reasons why he's one of my favorite villains in the entire series. First off, being the battle manga bro that I am, I of course loved the fight between him and Saitama. To that point in the story, it was the farthest that Saitama had ever been pushed, and Boros' feats of power were a true spectacle in this fight that made for one of the best anime fights I've personally ever watched. Other than that though, what I think I love most about Boros' introduction into One Punch Man is that he was the first villain to really show how large scale one really wanted to go with this story. With Boros, we learned that extraterrestrial life was pretty much canon in the series, so that opened the door for major plot points and characters in the series going forward, to not just exist on a planetary but also a universal level, like we've been kind of seeing now with all the Blast and God stuff. Boros was pretty much a hard introduction to how vast of a universe one wanted One Punch Man to be, and I could not be happier that he ended up going this route. Number four on the list might come as a bit of a surprise for you, but hopefully by the time I'm done talking about him, you'll see exactly why I threw him in here. The villain in question is pretty much the embodiment of incel energy to the straight up max, Fear Ugly. Now, he's an interesting case to me because his character introduced a new concept to One Punch Man that I think added a cool wrinkle to the power system of the series in general. As we all know, things like extreme negative emotions and environmental factors can cause monster transformations, but Fear Ugly case is kind of special. When he shows up in front of Amai Mask and pretty much makes him piss his pants out of pure horror from his ugliness, Amai explains that Fear Ugly is likely an Ugmon, which is someone whose monster transformation stemmed from a deep and violent insecurity of their own appearance. Not only is his transformation unique from other monsters, the way he becomes stronger is too. The source of Fear Ugly's power stems from feelings of inferiority and humiliation, so the more humiliated he feels, the stronger he becomes. Dude pretty much has a humiliation fetish, so yeah, do what you want with that information. 
At first, he's just a super strong meathead that gets bigger and stronger with every L that he takes. And then once he becomes vomited for your ugly after being eaten by gums, he essentially becomes a fat ball of acid. What makes me really consider him as one of my favorite villains in the whole series, though, is quite simply the unrelenting raw brutality that he brought to the Monster Association arc. I mean, he straight up brutalized Tank Top Master into my mask, to the point that I realized that we might actually see some crazy deaths in this arc. For the most part, One Punch Man is a pretty lighthearted story, so having main characters get brought to near death in such a graphic way was a serious shocker at the time. I'm sure those of you that were reading weekly as we saw Tank Top Master get completely broken into pieces like feel the same way as I did. Not to mention that Fear Ugly was responsible for one of the only deaths in the series with the Council of Swordsmen. He just like straight up melted them. All in all, Fear Ugly added a sense of uneasiness in every scene that he was in, and it was a much needed aspect to the Monster Association arc. Simply having him in the story added a level of unpredictability and stakes to the arc that I really enjoyed. Now, if you're a regular on my channel, you know that I have a weird obsession with Phoenix Man for some reason, so of course he has to be on this list. Phoenix Man just offers so much to the story from his sick design and abilities to his really interesting backstory. Before becoming a monster, Phoenix Man was just a regular guy that played a role in a kid's TV show called Animal Kingdom. In the show, he played a character called Birdbrain and wore the same costume we see him wear as a monster. In the show, his character was described as being dumb and happy, dying in various ways each episode only to come back like nothing happened by the next one. He's pretty much the One Punch Man equivalent of Kenny from South Park. Eventually, the show was canceled for having too much dark humor, and Phoenix Man was therefore fired and tossed away. This firing is what kickstarted the negative emotions that began his monster transformation. He soon realized that his costume had fused with his body and could now communicate with him telepathically, turning him into the monster known as Phoenix Man. With his new monster powers, he gained the ability to resurrect himself in a new, more powerful form every time that he dies. Dude's essentially a Saiyan. In his fight against Child Emperor, we saw him gain awesome abilities ranging from different modes that enhance his speed and strength, to even having the ability to resurrect the dead. Not to mention, he pretty much has his own domain expansion with the Phoenix space. His character was even nerfed later on, so he wasn't so damn broken. That's how you know that Phoenix Man is that guy. On top of all the cool transformations and powers that tickle my smooth battle manga brain, I do think he has a pretty tragic backstory that emphasizes that monster transformations in One Punch Man aren't as simple as, oh, you're a monster, that means you were just born to be evil. You can't help but feel for Phoenix Man and what he went through that led to his transformation. I think anybody could sympathize with having your life's purpose is pretty much stepped on and then being thrown away like a piece of trash or something. Thankfully, unlike the last two villains on this list, Phoenix Man came out of his fight alive and seemingly turned a new leaf as a crossing guard for kids, and he seems pretty happy to be doing it. So there's a good chance we haven't seen the last of him. Well, kicking off my top two, we probably have one of the most insane characters in the series, like, just simply as a concept. And that, of course, is Black S. I don't think I have to go into a ton of detail as to why Black S deserves to be in my top five, because he's definitely become something of a fan favorite character, and for good reason. He has the ability to reshape his body and make trillions of clones of himself that can act autonomously. He can even combine his clones to create stronger versions of himself, like Golden S and Platinum S. His Golden form seems to be best suited for brute force and durability, and his platinum form has a bigger emphasis on speed. You can honestly make the case that Black S could single-handedly take out most of the S-Class, aside from characters like Tatsumaki and Blast, of course. For me, Black S was honestly so much damn fun to have in the Monster Association arc, and he was usually involved in one way or another in some of its best moments. I'm personally not a fan of Atomic Samurai, so it was cool to see him get humbled by Black S. And on top of that, the tsunami attack he did above ground was some peak art from Murata. Most importantly for me though, his golden and platinum forms gave me such a nostalgic Dragon Ball Z villain vibe. Like, you could easily drop this character in the Dragon Ball universe, and it would make perfect sense. I mean, aside from the fact that he's pretty much sentient sperm, I don't think Toriyama would go for that, but you know what I mean. On top of that, his three-way fight with Flashy Flash and Garo was absolute peak art for Murata. And of course, who could forget the fact that he helped set up the reveal of King's ultimate move. For that and many other reasons, I am eternally grateful to have this weird little guy in the story. 
So just before we get to my number one favorite villain, I want to bring up a couple honorable mentions that couldn't make it on this list. The first is Deep Sea King. His whole mini arc in the anime is honestly what made me fall in love with One Punch Man to begin with. The episodes looked absolutely amazing. And of course, he allowed my boy Moomin Rider to have a shining hero moment. Honestly, that was probably the only One Punch Man moment that really had me choking up. I think some of you could agree with me. Second, we have Homeless Emperor. I just really love his design and powers. Plus, he perfectly perfectly showed how broken God really was, since only a small taste of his power turned a regular dude into a dragon level threat. Lastly, and this was probably the toughest monster to leave out of my top 5 if I'm being honest, we have that monster hot dog that showed up in one of the One Punch Man bonus chapters. Never since the monster hot dog have I seen a more engaging and deep character in the series, so yeah, rest in peace my friend, you are greatly missed. Well, trolling aside, my favorite villain in all of One Punch Man should come as no surprise to anybody, and I'm sure he's at the top of your list too. My number one favorite villain in all of One Punch Man is Crablante. Just kidding, it's Garo. From a very young age, Garo was constantly bullied for rooting for the villain in his favorite kids TV shows, while all the other kids would obviously root for the hero. This caused him to be seen as an outcast and began his resentment for heroes, since his bullies would label him as the villain and themselves as the heroes when they'd be playing outside, giving them an excuse to beat up on Garo. Eventually, he stumbled across Bang's dojo as an aimless and abandoned kid, and was quickly shown to be a fighting prodigy. He became the strongest martial artist at his dojo quickly, but one day he finally snapped and was expelled for beating up everyone in the dojo. This began his journey as the infamous hero hunter, with most of his journey being followed by season 2 of the anime. In pursuing his goal to be the absolute evil, Garo leveled up time and time again to match the strength of his opponents. This allowed him to run the gauntlet of S-Class heroes, including Tank Top Master, Puri Puri Prisoner, and Super Alloy Darkshine, increasing his power every time and drawing closer and closer to his eventual monster transformation. Transformation. The only stain on his resume really is just getting his ass whooped by Watchdog Man, but that's pretty much it. He also had epic fights with monsters like Royal Ripper, Monster King Orochi, and Overgrown Rover along the way. After his fight with Darkshine, Garo's claims of being a monster finally became a reality. Although a monster, Garo's humanity hadn't fully disappeared as a punch from Bang knocked him to his senses. This led Garo to perform one of the most impressive feats of power the series has ever seen. When he straight up speed blitzed, vomited Fura Ugly, Evil Natural Ocean, and Platinum S. He achieved his perfected technique, the God Slayer Fist, after chopping Sage Centipede right down the middle all the way from freaking space. In a recent video I made talking about the most massive characters in One Punch Man, I discovered that Sage Centipede is literally like over 90 miles long, so chopping him down the middle is a truly insane feat. He also showed off his unbeatable speed against Flashy Flash and Platinum S, where they had an all-out fight moving long distances across the sky in mere fractions of a second. During his fight with Saitama when he turned into Cosmic Fear Garo, he without question became the strongest villain that we've ever seen in the series. And he'll probably hold that title for a really, really long time. His fight with Saitama in outer space was iconic of course, and the end of his character arc was pretty satisfying in my opinion. I've said this a couple times in other videos, but honestly Garo is one of the only villains I could think of that I was actively rooting for. I mean, you know you've done something right when you create a villain that's so likable like Garo is. Honestly, I don't think One Punch Man would be nearly as good as it is if Garo wasn't included. He pretty much became the main character of the story for a good portion of the Monster Association arc. So yeah, let me know your top 5 villains of One Punch Man in the comments below. I don't really have a cool outro for this video, so have a wonderful morning, afternoon, night, whatever, and I'll see you guys in the next video.